Welcome back to more Farm Road with Family. We got a little bit of snow last night. It's still sort of coming down now. It's just starting to blow around. But we have my 4560 front end back together. Now it's time to put the fuel back in the fuel tank we took out when we started the project. So just gonna get a few gallons out of here, put it in, then we'll, we'll bring the tractor in and put the rest of it in. Just getting a workout again this morning. Got the wiring harness I'll put in the tractor. Kind of looks like a rat's nest, but we got our power wires and a wire to go to our auto steer here, and then wire to go to our monitor. That'll go here. I just I'm waiting for some wing bolts to come. I just ran everything here. These are my two sprayer monitors. This is to control my nozzles and program my rates. And then this is to control the booms and uh, fold those. That all goes off one hydraulic, so it saves you from having to have a bunch of hydraulics. So right now I have everything kind of taped up and back here. I'm going to try to tie it so it stays out of the way. So when you, if the seat goes down, it doesn't crush something. And then it comes out the back, and we'll get this covered up. And then we have the monitor or the wire harness going up to the GPS or the globe so it comes up here put a few little zip ties sits up there so now I got to do still is uh, got to take it outside and calibrate it to the tractor got to tell it how high it's off the ground uh, if it's in front of the stationary axle, which is the back axle. So then if you're on a little bit of a side hill, it tells it how much to drive up the hill so your planter or whatever you're pulling stays in perfect line. Um, and then that's pretty much it until we... It doesn't have to do anything with the sprayer, like with the air seeder. I have to hook up or I have to program all the different like the rate that I want my fertilizer to go out and my seed, but I don't have to do any of that because it's not controlling anything with the sprayer that I'll do by hand. So this will be a little bit easier to set up. Also, if you live in the Montrose, Colorado area, that's where my brother-in-law and sister live. Um, my brother-in-law has his own construction company, uh, Timberline Installations, and he does flooring and like shower. So he does like tiling, luxury vinyl, I don't think he does like the like regular hardwood floors, uh, but he'll do like backsplashes, anything to do with tiling. Um, so if you're in that area, check him out. You can find him on, I think he's on Facebook. You just look up Timberline Installations. Um, he's, he's on there. So if you go on Facebook, Timberline Installations Inc. He has his page there pictures of different projects that he's done so does good work has nice end product so if you're in that area let him know now the next thing is to put a uh, what do you call it charcoal filter in here for spraying just helps trap any vapors that might come your way so you gotta take these two bolts off then above here there's a filter we'll show you and then I got a new filter from Gemplers. I think it's like a hundred something dollars. There's the part number that fits the sound guard cab. JD30B. I checked with John Deere and for their it didn't even say charcoal air filter, just said it was like carbon activated filter. But they wanted like eight hundred dollars for theirs. And this one was I think like a hundred and eighty dollars. So We'll go with aftermarket. All right, ready to start this thing up.
let it get warmed up. The thermostat will open, it'll suck in the uh, coolant, and then we'll just see how much it sucks it down, then we'll add, keep adding until it's full enough. I think it's gonna be a pretty slick tractor. this thing run for probably about 15 minutes so it's gotten warmed up temperature gauge came up so the thermostat should have opened so now we'll let it cool down for a couple minutes shut it off check in about half an hour 45 minutes see if it sucks the fluid down and see if we need to add more so it got the air out of the system then we should be good as far as, as far as the radiator part goes all right, ready to start the track. Right away. It's back to life. Got the front end back together. Sounds nice. Now we're doing some service on the 4560. Uh, gonna change oil on it. Got the old stuff drained out. Got the filter taken off. Gonna put on a new Baldwin filter. Uh, fill it with some John Deere plus 52 oil. Uh, the old stuff was the break-in oil since we just did this tractor last year and it has about 225 hours on it since we put the new one in. Um, so we took out the break-in oil, now we're going to put in regular oil. It hasn't been burning any so they tell me it's it's fine to start using the regular oil. So we'll get this uh, changed and then we're also going to change the hydraulic fluid because I don't know when that was done last and just having things apart it's best to best to get that changed. We've got the oil filter filled up with oil. Get the new ring, the new gasket. <laughs> Changed it at which on this tractor it's 16. Uh, I'll show all this going to show up 16,687. Got off work, working at the hospital last night. Had a pretty good shift, and come home. And I think 
21 is in the process of having a cap, so we'll go check that out. Yep, I am pretty sure. Uh, it looks like there is a hoof sticking out. We won't get too close. We don't want to bug her too much. Just let her kind of do her thing. But there's the water bag. And I see at least one hoof. So she's doing her thing. And well, well, isn't this a surprise? Number four had her calf. And he looks all nice and healthy. It looks like a bull. Okay, we'll let you be. We'll just let him do their thing. He's nice and dry. She had him inside, so that's nice. I was not expecting her to have a calf because yesterday she didn't even have a bag at all. Well, 21 must be licking up some of the water bait that came out already. Usually they eat their afterbirth once they get the calf all taken care of, but we'll let her do her thing and see if she can have this one. Hopefully everything's good. We'll check back later. All right, the uh, calf is born. And he's coughing a little bit. She's gonna get up and lick him. I'm just gonna hang up behind here because this one chased me last year and I don't want to make her too nervous. So we don't want her to really see me. But he's breathing. She's doing her job licking him. I wish I could zoom in with this thing. And she's giving a little belly, letting us know to stay away. When are you going to have your little calfie? You better not chase me. You better not chase me. He's moving around. She's saying stay away. Hi, right, welcome back. It's about 12.30 in the afternoon. Just got done sleeping for the morning. So we're gonna go check on the calf. Sarah said she watched him and he had already sucked and everything. And she got them all dried off, so. Gonna let her have her space. But number four had hers inside the barn and she had hers outside the barn. So they get to kind of have them wherever they choose, I guess. But there's still straw here and everything. It has started snowing, so tomorrow I might put some more straw down for them. But we're gonna... I think number four is just still inside the barn, I believe. Here's number four's calf. Hey, buddy. He must have sucked. His mouth is nice and warm. And he's spry. He can go. <laughs> he is a bull calf. There's the afterbirth. She hasn't eaten that yet, so we'll see if she does or not. She might not. You hanging out inside, girly? <coughs> We're getting more moisture, so this is awesome. And I can't quite tell what number 21's is. I, it kind of looks like a bowl, but we'll see. So he doesn't want us to get too close. But he's doing pretty good. And this one is a bull as well. So the next couple days we'll get a band put on him. Just let him get established first. She's being a good mama.
So she's shaking her head at me and stuff. Um, they get a lot more protected the, la the first like 24, 48 hours or so. They actually kind of have like kind of a fever. So their body temperature rises just part of their calving process. And last year, like for the first two days, she was like super protective. And then after that, she mellowed away out and then I was able to go around the calf and she didn't bother me at all. So they just get extra protective the first little while because calf is still getting up, moving around. Um, can't really defend itself or run away from anything. So they get a little extra protective, but the rest of the time she'll be, she'll be a pretty chill cow again in a day or two. See how day number two for the calves is going. It's on some nice dry hay. And there's your calf. They're all snuggled in. Moms are doing a good job. Nobody else has had a calf yet. Glad they're doing good. Everyone's getting their grain. Sometimes the calves will get a quick breakfast here while they're eating. And the other little calf He's down there. I think I'm going to move him around so he doesn't get stepped on. Mm -hmm.